Hello, my Minecraftians. It is time for another Let's Play. Oh, it is time for another audiobook. I, I'm really good at Russian accents. <laughs> okay. Hello. <laughs> anyway. Chapter 4. Neon stood silently in the dark cave. He knew exactly where Sparks Brian was. The only problem was that he was within a town was with a talented soldier. He would have to think about his next move. Suddenly, a bright light like an enchanted light like an enchantment appeared right next to him. Neon shielded his eyes from the from the blinding light that soon became Hero Brian himself. Hero Brian. Neon bowed immediately at the sight of of his dictator. Where is Sparks Brian? Have you already finished him off? Or are you the coward of the group and have run away from your mission? Herobrine showed no emotion while asking these questions. Sir, I have been following Sparks Brian ever since I was separated from the others. He is right over there. Neon pointed to the top of the other wall where the two slept beside the torch. Why have you not killed him then? He is right over there, just... Then an eerie noise rang through the cave, bouncing off the walls. Neon wasn't affected by it, but Hero Brian sure was. He threw up his hands, up to, up to cover his ears. His entire body crumpled down into a, a defensive position. His eyes were sealed shut, but when he opened them, by them they glowed a light of gold color. Gah! Hero Brian groaned in pain. He definitely didn't like the sound. Neon was shocked to see his master in such pain. In response, he slowly drew his sword and prepared to slice the man who had killed his father so long ago. But before he got the chance, Herobrine gave in to the eerie noise. All right, all right, fine, I'll stick to the plan. The noise stopped, and, Hero, and Herobrine fell to his knees, recovering from the pain. Herobrine looked up slowly at his, at, at his fiercest warrior. As he did so, Neon replaced the sword with, with a cookie. <sighs> what could I do without you? Herobrine carefully took the cookie from Neon's hand. He looked weak, and his voice was very shaky. What was that? Neon had never seen Herobrine in pain like that before. Some new client. He wants the boy alive. Herobrine's sigh told Neon that he had no desires to give him any more information. After that, Herobrine sat down on the wall, with, le with, with his legs dangling above the horde of zombies, and slowly ate the cookie. And Neon sat further away beside him. They both sat staring in the direction of the torchlight. Neon decided to finally ask, So, what's the plan? The next morning. When Sparks Brian woke up, the cave was just as dark as before. Sparky sat up and looked around in the darkness. It would have been pointless to look around, except instead of seeing nothing like before, Sparky saw a very dim light far in the distance. It definitely hadn't been there before. Is it sunlight? Probably not. We were down too deep. We, we're down too deep. Is it torchlight? Maybe, but that means someone passed by, and that is unlikely. Unless if Neon and his friends followed me here. What if they're lurking in the shadows? DJ, we have to get- we have to go. Sparky shook DJ awake. What the- dude? You want- you- What the- dude? What do you- What do you want me up for? We have to go- We have to go, get up. Sparky pointed to the light. Good eye, Sparky. It's- it's a way out. No, we need to get away from it. Let's try to find the way we came in. Sparks Brian would prefer to walk on the zombies ten more times rather than to face Neon and his friends again. DJ just ignored Sparky and began walking along the wall towards the light. Sparky didn't want to argue, but then he prepared an I told you so speech in case they got into trouble. DJ and Sparky both held a torch in one hand and a sword in the other. 
P.J. walked towards the light until a gap between the maze walls stopped to them right in their tracks. Well, looks like we'll be going back. DJ interrupted Sparky by pulling out some dirt blocks and placing them in a row in a f to form a dirt bridge from one side to the other. You coming? Then DJ walked across the bridge with Sparks Brian behind, wishing he hadn't said anything. They continued walking carefully on the maze walls. Sometimes the wall was thick and sometimes it was thin. When there was no wall, DJ built a dirt bridge. One false move, and you would fall down through the maze, which was still full of zombies. You feeling okay? DJ looked over at Sparks Brian. Yeah, why? Nothing. You just seemed so persistent. You just seemed so persistent earlier to go back. You seemed as if you were scared. I was just wondering what someone like you would be so scared about. DJ was honestly curious. What do you mean? I have been scared the entire time. I was even scared of you after you chased me. Really? Because you have been braver than I ever was when I was at your level. For example, last night, when I was holding back, you ran straight into the horde like a foolish... Uh, wait, <laughs> to the horde. Kind of foolish, but brave too. Also, for example, when you first arrived, instead of staying behind at camp while we were on the search... You accepted our scrap weapons, armor, and food, and you came with us. And w and when we, s we, f we 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 first entered this cave, you didn't hesitate to ask to go or ask to go back. You followed me right into the darkness, and I really thank you for that. Sparks Brian didn't know what to say. He smiled like he had never, like like he had never before, and simply said, "Thanks." So. Why were you afraid when we s w when we saw the that light? So, why were you afraid when we saw that light? DJ looked at Sparky as if his answer would have to would have to have to do with some legendary monster. Before we met, I was on the run, not just from the soldiers, but from Neon and his friends. There were ten of them in all. They said something about bringing their to me to their boss, Hero Brian. Hero Brian? DJ seemed to know him, but Sparky continued. Neon was the leader of the group. I have mixed feeling about it, feelings about him, though. One moment he treats me like a friend, and the next he punches me to the ground. He is the only one in the group who has glowing eyes, a a, a, a representation of a representation of power. I think his eyes are neon purple. When he stares at you, chills run down your spine. I never understood the meaning of his cold, lonely, scared, and angry eyes. I only met him, him and his friends once, and I didn't like it one bit. At least soldiers take me seriously. These people treated me like a toy. I was nothing but a challenge to them. Then Sparky looked down in embarrassment. Well, if you see them again, they'll have to learn the hard way not to mess with you. You've grown a lot since we first met. Thanks to me, of course. An appreciative smile grew on Sparky's face. Thanks, DJ. <sighs> DJ and Sparky continued walking along the maze wall. They walked, surrounded by darkness, for a long time. As they came close enough to see that the source of light was glowstone, Sparks Brian stopped. He didn't move an inch. He felt as if someone was watching him again. And this time, he knew who it was. DJ! DJ stopped and turned towards Sparky, who was standing as still as a statue. What is it? DJ looked at Sparky curiously. Someone is watching me. I think it's Neon. He he has probably been, been following us the entire time. Let's not go closer to that light source. It might be a trap. DJ looked around the darkness. I don't see any glowing eyes. How about I go over there and check the light source out? I'll let you know if it's safe. Okay, thanks. Sparky worried for his new friend, but was too shy to object. Why am I so scared? I can easily handle some meanies. I have some armor now, and I know how to fight. Why? Then Sparky remembered those cold, neon purple eyes. He remembered the faces of those warriors. He remembered the pain. 
But most of all, he remembered the feeling of power. He, he, remember, he remembered, but most of all, he remembered feeling powerless. He felt like he couldn't do anything about it. Sparky shivered at the memory. Is that what I'm afraid of? Not having control? Sparky pondered. Meanwhile, DJ continued walking towards the light source. He looked back every now and then to see Sparky nervously looking at him. Is this a tra is this a trap? Can Sparky sense things I can't? Nah. DJ brushed away his suspicions. He didn't want to be afraid anymore, and he wasn't going to worry about a little light. Hey, Sparky! The light the light we saw was some glowstone at the entrance of a cave. Maybe the citizens are in this direction. Sparky's brain walked a few steps forwards and then stopped again. This time, he sat down. What's in the cave? Even Sparky had no idea why he sat down. Something inside him just couldn't go any further. Okay, I'll be back in half a sunrise. Then DJ ran into the cave, enchanted gold sword in hand, and disappeared into the darkness. Half a sunrise passed. DJ didn't show up. Another half a sunrise passed. Not even a sound. Sparky began to worry. DJ? DJ? You there? Sparky's friend slowly walked into the cave. After a few slow steps, Sparky began to run. DJ! Sparky pulled out his diamond sword and ran into the cave after DJ. Above ground! Yeah! <laughs> Candy climbed out of one of the many holes dotting the city streets. It was like a minefield of holes going all the way down to bedrock. No citizens down there either, Candy noted to her I know yeah, Candy noted to herself. Maybe they're in the nether. Candy and the others had been digging non stop for two days now. They were all getting tired and began running low on food. They started mining. They started out mining safely and cautiously with this stair, with the staircase method, but then began just digging straight down like quite as Violent had when they first started. Joe Dub was put in charge of repairing pickaxes, hunting, and cooking. Most of the food he provided was fish. He didn't like killing pigs or cows, so he fished a lot. Bella Bear, his daughter, came over and helped him too. Him fish too. Many of them didn't like like fish, so they were not the most appreciative, but it, but, but it kept them alive, and that was what they needed. Candy began to wonder where DJ and Sparky were, and why they hadn't come back. Hey, Tedder, come with me. I want to see where DJ and Sparky left to. Tedder followed Candy in the direction DJ had followed, and Sparky almost two days ago. They walked about until they saw Sparky's cave entrance. But this time it wasn't abandoned. Neon stood in the entrance of the cave, leaning against one of the walls. Candy recognized him. Hey, you're not. Wait up. Hey, you're you're that one guy I flung into a pile of hay. Neon leaned against the wall silently, rolling his eyes, remembering how helpless he had felt. He then looked at the two players and said to Candy. My master wants to meet you. He thinks your fighting skills might be might be of use to him. Neon grinned, the way someone does when they know they won't lose. If it if it has to do with Sparks Brian, I ain't helping. If it has to do with anyone being hurt by my hands, I won't help you no matter what. Neon Neon chuckled. Then you will have to help in another way. He then vanished. Nothing but neon purple particles where he had once stood. Ching! An ender pearl, s pearl sword pierced. Uh, an ender pearl sword pierced Candy's armor from behind. Purple particles swirled around him as Neon reappeared behind her. She turned, swinging her sword at Neon, but he vanished with nothing but particles where he once was. He then reappeared in front of Candy and kicked her in the face. Tedder, I could use a little help. Tedder had been standing dazed, wishing he could do that. He suddenly woke from his daydream and pulled out a bucket of water. He poured it onto the ground near Candy. Tedder shrugged. Maybe this will help? 
Neon teleported right outside the water. Candy and Tedder stood in the blue wetness. They hoped this would somehow affect him, since he was Enderman-like. Neon looked down at the water in front of his feet. <laughs> really? He then took a step into the water to show that he was not affected by it. He almost laughed. Neon then teleported and sliced this time at Tedder. Tedder tried to block, but Neon was too quick. He sliced here, punched there, and kicked her again. Tedder didn't know where to look when, when, when Neon vanished. Candy scooped up the water and threw it back at to Tedder. Tedder then pulled out his flint and steel. He lit a ring of fire around him and Candy. They both stood side by side and prepared to push Neon into the flames. Neon stood outside the ring of fire. Neon stared at them with his evil smile, his glowing eyes like a nightmare, staring at them through the burning red, play, red flames. Purple particles dis di dispersed from where Neon had been standing. He reappeared right in front of both Tedder and Candy, his feet facing them. He kicked them both into the fire behind them. Tedder and Candy disappeared from sight, along with Neon, in the blazing hot flames. End of chapter 4. Thank you guys for listening.